Good morning, everybody. The topic, the subject for today is job creation and knowledge-based economy. And as the issue around this, those lectures is women in focus today, there is a woman who will be in focus, Eva Couch, who is my supporter in this very project around job creation in the city of, of Wrocław. But before I would ask Eva to, to talk about this, this theme, I wanted to inform you, I mean, as I said, today, job creation and knowledge-based economy. Next month, I invited already Professor Hunzewicz, who is, spe who is specialized in, in the issue of climate change and climate mitigation. He was a member of an international committee who got Nobel Prize in the year 2007 because of the, the report dedicated to the subject of climate, climate change. And whatever you're dealing with nowadays, especially in Europe, you have to touch this very important and, and, and crucial for our survival subject, climate change. Then next month there will be <coughs> Professor Langer, who is a member of the European Committee dealing with innovation, and the subject will be innovation. Then one month later, two people that specialize in, in the subject startups, they will be talking about startups, and finally in May, one of my friends will be, will be talking about social capital, how to make people better, better cooperating, how to make the social capital, capital growing. Okay, this is the this is the program, and and now Eva Couch from the city of Wrocław, from the agency which was special, specialized in in accepting and supporting investors and creating jobs, and then making the jobs to be to be better jobs means better paid, better organized, and better using our intellectual capacity. Okay, Eva. Okay, thank you very much. Hello, everyone. First of all, I have to say that it's a great pleasure for me and privilege to be here today with you. And what I would like to do is to share the story of my city, Wrocław, how the city has changed in recent years. But I'd like to start from the short introduction. So my name is Eva, and for over 14 years, I've been working in the field of economic promotion of my city, in the field of attracting foreign investors, but also cooperating with startups and Polish companies. And since 2012, I've become a member of the board of Wrocław Agglomeration Development Agency. In a minute, I will tell you a little bit more about the company. Since 2017, I, I, I was the president of the board of that company. But last year, at the end of last year, I decided to change my job. And since January this year, I'm the managing director of Concordia Hub, which is one of the biggest startup hub in Poland. And my goal is to create this hub in Wrocław because we've got more and more startups growing in the city, but there is no platform, good platform, to link the startups with big companies. And my current job is to create and support startup ecosystem in my city. So I've got brief presentation and later on we've got time for Q&A, but if you have any questions during the presentation, please don't hesitate and ask, okay? Have you ever been to Wrocław? Have you chance to visit the city? Okay. <laughs> so for those who haven't visited so far, I recommend to, to, to visit because it's really a beautiful city, but it has changed a lot within recent years. And 20 years ago, the unemployment rate in the city was 12%. In the region of Lower Silesia, it was even 18%. And I was born in 1982. And when my parents sent me on holidays in 90s somewhere to Baltic Sea, and I met people from other regions of Poland, and they asked me, where do I come from? And my answer was from Wrocław. Almost nobody knows where Wrocław is, what it's about. So the image of Wrocław, even in Poland, wasn't really great. 
but it has changed and today I would like to tell you a little bit what has happened that the, right now the city is considered as the one of the fastest developing city in Europe. Uh, after joining European Union in 2004, in Poland we noticed great interest of foreign investors. But frankly speaking, the, these big international corporations, they didn't understand the situation in Poland. They didn't know how to invest their money. They didn't understand the legal procedures that are in our country. And because of the mayor Dudkiewicz, he, he decided to establish special institution, which is called Wrocław Agglomeration Development Agency, which was focused to attract foreign investors to Wrocław region. And it was very first in Poland that this kind of institution was established. And we offer one-stop shop services to the companies. So it means that we work like consultant agency, like EY, Deloitte, or KPMG. But the difference is that we do not charge companies for our services. Because, because uh, um, of Polish law, local authorities, cities, cannot give direct financial support to the companies. We cannot offer the IBM money to invest in the city. It's available only on the central government, the public aid system, but local authorities cannot support financially companies. So the mayor decided to establish company that would be focused on supporting, attracting foreign investors. And since 2005, we convinced over 200 foreign companies to invest in our region. And we've got such a brand as Nokia, IBM, HP, Dolby, Bosch Siemens, LG, many, many international brands. And these companies created over 100,000 new workplaces. And what is important, you have to remember that these 100,000 new workplaces are created directly by these investors. But each new workplace created by the company generates from three to five new workplaces in business environment. Because these companies use Polish partners, suppliers, uh, they hire people and these people spend money in the city. So they go to clubs, bars, cinemas. So in fact, that number is at least three times higher. And according to Eurostat, we are number one in European Union in terms of job creation because we've got over, right now, we've got around 400,000 new workplaces created in the last 15 years. And also what is important, we decided our strategy is not to focus on one sector of economy, not only automotive or IT. We would like to have diversified economy. Therefore, we are focused on production, but also modern business service sector. Modern business service sector, I mean research uh, R&D centers, IT centers, BPO centers. So you can notice that we've got 50-50%. So 50% in production and 50% percent uh, in this business service sector. And because of that, we have received a lot of awards. Right now, perception and image of Wrocław in Poland is extremely positive, but also outside. And two or three weeks ago, Skanska, Colliers and Denton, so big international corp corporations, they prepared research about investment climate in Europe. And they ranked 270 cities in Europe in terms of the GDP growth and which cities are growing the fastest. And we are ranked as number three after uh, Dublin and Prague. Uh, so comparing the situation that was 20 years ago, it, th this is totally amazing for us. Uh, but it was a long way and my, my idea is to, to share with you uh, our experience. Um, when company consider investment somewhere, they, they are taken into consideration different factors. And for sure, extremely important is talent pool. So the company asks themselves if they are able to find right talented people in, in uh, the city. Of course, crucial is the cost effectiveness. So if in long term perspective, it be the, 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 the cost effectiveness will be okay for, for the company. 
Of course, the accessibility of the city, so the location, if it's easy to commute to the city, how easy it is to transfer goods from the city, also is very important. But also investment climate, the way how we cooperate with companies, what, is, what are the public institutions, how the uh, political situation look like. These are also factors that are taken into consideration and I would say that also more and more important is quality of life. So if we decide to, if IBM is looking for a new uh, destination somewhere in Europe, it's important for them to be in nice city, to, uh, to be in the city that provide people with high quality of life. And knowing this, we decided to improve our public infrastructure, but also to work with people to make them aware of the fact that they could develop in, in <coughs> different companies to work with international brands. Um, this I will show you in a minute. So maybe starting from the public infrastructure. Wrocław is quite lucky because our location is quite convenient. We are very close to the German border and Czech border but also municipality itself, but also central government, they have spent a lot of money to build new roads, to build new railway, uh, railway roads. Uh, because of Euro 2012, because we were one of the cities that hosted Euro 2012, uh, we've got new terminal, uh, we've got international airport, and that means that for international company, where the, the access to the city is quite convenient. And in 2005, we've got one international connection flight from our airport. It was to London Stansted uh, because of the fact that a lot of Poles go to UK to work there. And right now, we've got several international connections we've got connections, direct connections with all major European hubs. And it makes um, life of the companies, but also of lots of citizens more, mm, maybe mm, more comfortable, I would say. Uh, but it's not only about the accessibility of the city, it's also about the commuting around the city. Uh, because um, People right now, they don't want to use their cars. They would like to use public transport. So cities spend a lot to increase public infrastructure, public transport system. We've got buses, we've got trams, but also we were very first Polish city that implemented, for example, municipal bikes rental system. So we've got 2000 bikes, municipal bikes that could be rented by citizens. Also, we were very first Polish city that introduced electric car rental system. We've got right now 200 electric cars that, uh, that could be rented by citizens. Talent pool. Wrocław is capital of Lower Silesia. This is one of the regions of Poland. The population of Lower Silesia is almost 3 million people. So as I know, the population of Kiev is 3 million people. So Wrocław is much smaller than Kiev because the population of the city is 640,000 people. But right now we are very happy because we are more and more international city and we've got over 120,000 expats living in the city, mainly from Ukraine. We've got over 100,000 Ukrainians living in Wrocław, but also we've got a lot of young people from Spain, Greece, Portugal, Italy, because of the crisis in these countries, they decided to move to Poland because cost of living is much lower and job opportunities are much better than in Portugal or Spain. So we've got more and more expat living in the city. And Polish society is getting older. This is the problem in the whole country. And a lot of cities suffer the, the population problem. So the society is aging and moreover, a lot of people decided to move from one place to other. And we are very lucky because city itself is attractive as a place to live in. And a lot of people decided to move to, to Wrocław. And we are among three Polish cities. They don't suffer the population problem. So more people are coming to the city than living. And within last decade, over 40,000 people decided 
to move to the city. This is the statistic number, the people who are registered, but in, but in fact people are not obliged to register in Poland, so probably that number is much higher. And also for the companies and businesses, uh, extremely important is academia world. Uh, so universities, uh, people, students, and cooperation with universities. And right now, Wrocław is the third biggest academic center in Poland. We've got 110,000 students. It means also that every six person in the city is a student, so it's quite a young city. But also what is important, 60% of our students are not from Wrocław. They are coming from other regions, and they usually stay after studies. So also it's great inflow of new citizens. And also what is nice that students are really satisfied about being in Wrocław. They are satisfied uh, about their choice. They, they've got over 60%, they've got plan to stay in our city. And 88% would recommend it, the city to their friends. Almost everybody speak English. 90% uh, of students speak fluent English, 50% of students speak German, then is uh, French, Russian, Spanish, and it's quite obvious for young people that they have to speak foreign languages because it's re requirement of the companies, not only foreign but also Polish ones. And because of the great infrastructure, because of the great talent pool, but also the strategy of the city to attract investors, we have attracted a lot of companies and from different sectors. As I mentioned before, we wouldn't like to focus on one sector. We'd like to have diversified economy. Therefore, we've got automotive, we've got white goods, electronics, um, pharma, but also IT uh, and modern business service sector. And we've got really known international brands, probably you know all the names that are here. Maybe about modern business sector, I would like to talk a little bit more, because this is totally new sector of the economy. It started globally 20 years ago. In Poland, it started in 2007, 2008. Modern business sector is about providing for example, finance and accounting services, or IT services, or HR services for the companies. And Poland is the hub of modern business service sector in Central Eastern Europe. And you can see these different cities, and these numbers are about employment in that sector. So in Krakow, we've got 70,000 people working in that sector. Uh, in Wrocław, almost 50,000. In Warsaw, 56,000 people are working in, in business process outsourcing sector. Here we've got some brands from that sector, but what is crucial for us that we've got more and more technological advanced companies. We are one of the biggest IT hub in Central Eastern Europe. And here we've got the names of the companies that decided to invest in our city uh, since 2005 to 2018. And our estimation is that right now we've got around 300 IT companies, Polish and foreign ones, and around 40,000 people working in IT in Wrocław. And here we've got also data which is important for us that we've, we are number one in Poland uh, in IT R&D. So we've got a lot of research and development centers. At, and also it means that these companies that got R&D centers that hire people really talented, skilled, with experience, and the condition of working are much better than it used to be 15 years ago. And the profile of the companies that are in Wrocław has changed a lot. When we started, we wanted to attract each company that would create new workplaces. So LG, manual working, big factory, 7,000 people was really great for us. Right now, because there is no unemployment rate, I will show you in a minute data that would compare 
2005-2006 and current situation, we, do not, we don't want to have simple manual working. We would like to have more center of excellence, knowledge centers, R&D centers, more sophisticated and more complex uh, processes and investors. And what we do right now is not to attract, it's not about attracting foreign investors, it's more about attracting people because companies have problems with recruitment. There are no people on the market available. So the city put a lot of effort to attract new citizens. This is the comparison of 2006 and 2018. So unemployment rate in the city was 8% in 2006. Right now is 1.7 in 2019. Mo average monthly salary, it was uh, 2,800 slotties. Right now is over 5,300 uh, 5, slotties. Flight uh, passengers per year. I mentioned that in 2005 we've got one international connection, so and we served 400,000 people at the airport yearly. Right now it's over 3 million people. GDP growth is, it was 25,000 slotties. Right now it's 57,000. So the growth, the data shows how the city has changed. And it wouldn't be possible if the city wouldn't be open for new companies, the requirements of businesses, foreign and Polish ones. And also what is extremely nice, that companies that decided to invest long time ago, they are still growing in the city. I tell you about the Credit Suisse, for example. They decided to open center in Wrocław in 2007. They wanted to create 200 new jobs. Right now they've got 4,500 people and they are still growing. And what is extremely important is to take care, to offer post-investment care for these companies who have already trusted us. It's even more important than attracting new companies. We have to care about this who have already decided to be part of Wrocław ecosystem because these companies create the biggest number of new good workplaces. And this is quite standard, I would say, in the city that each company who decided to invest, they are still growing. And I don't know any example of the companies that invested and after some time decided to move somewhere else. So here we've got some case studies. The same is with Nokia. Nokia invested in 2000. They opened the, the center, small center. It was called uh, Siemens Software Development Center. Later on, it was bought by Nokia. Right now, Nokia has the biggest research center in Europe, in our city. They also hire four engineers and they are working on 5G solutions. So it's extremely innovative and the company still has plans to, to grow in Wrocław. Credit Suisse and I mentioned and what is quite new, uh, three years ago we decided as a city to support startup ecosystem and we decided to provide small Polish technological companies with similar kind of services as big companies. And since the time right now, Wrocław is number one in Poland in terms of the number of startups that operate in the city. That is extremely nice that uh, Startup City Hub in Europe, this is part of European Commission, they did the survey about the uh, potential of growth of startups ecosystem and our indicator is 3.6 which is better than Munich, Paris, Milan or Barcelona. So potential of growth among startups in Poland in general and in Wrocław is extremely high. And I would say that future of Wrocław depends on investors but also new technological Polish companies. We have to be more creative. We have to be, we have to be able 
produce more intellectual property because right now mainly this intellectual property is owned by international brands and it would be great to have, for example, such a Facebook or Amazon Polish one. And this is our idea for next year to, to develop the city. But apart from the business, the, the quality of life in the city has to be nice. Therefore, cities spend a lot of money to, to, to increase the standard of living. And a lot of beautiful places is right now in the city. And Wrocław is considered as the best place in Poland in terms of relocation. So if somebody consider moving somewhere in Poland, Wrocław is the first choice. Uh, it's one of the most beautiful cities in Poland, and it's also recognized as a nice tourist destination. Um, so for those who haven't visited the city, please book your time and spend three days, two, three days in Wrocław. And I would like to show you some pictures that was taken in 2008. This is the main railway station. This was our stadium. This is airport that was in 2008, and this is the biggest, uh, build, the highest building uh, in our city. And here we've got the same places, exactly the same places, and pictures taken in 2018. So this is the, the stadium uh, that was built because Euro 2012. Uh, this is the highest mm, building. This is one of the main uh, road uh, in, in Wrocław, and this is railway station. So it's not only about the data, statistic data, it's also about changing the, the infrastructure, and it's really noticeable for, for people and visitors that the city has changed. So this is brief presentation, and I would be more than happy right now to, to answer your questions. Uh, thank you, first of all, for the, this brilliant presentation. It was very interesting to see how the city changed. Uh, my question is about the, uh, the motivation of investors to come uh, to Wroclaw, exactly. Uh, you mentioned that it was, uh, like, it was very different uh, in 2005 than it is yet, uh, now. So what was the main, um, the main attraction for the investors? At the beginning, in 2005, the, the major factor, the attraction was cost effectiveness and talent pool. So we've got high unemployment rate, so a lot of people wanted to work, and the cost of running business was, was much lower than in Western European countries. And of course, also we've got a lot of plots available, real estate available for the investors. And right now, because the cost effectiveness, it's not, our, I would say, our advantage right now, but the competences of people. Because after these 15 years, we've got really talented, experienced people. And right now, companies choose Wrocław because of the experience and people that are in the city. And as I mentioned, at the beginning, we were attracting companies which created thousands of new jobs. Right now, for example, last year, we convinced Allianz, German big insurance company, to invest in Wrocław, but the scale of em employment is 50 people. But these 50 people are researchers, PhD, PhDs from mathematics and physics, and they will prepare mathematical model for all insurance industry. So it's totally sophisticated and totally different than simple production. So I would say that right now, the, the, the experience and skills of people are our biggest advantage. And some kind of ad hoc question. Um, a colleague of mine who have been working, he has been working in Bydgoszcz for some time, and he was telling me lots of things also about um, really good atmosphere and uh, IT sector. He was in, working in IT sector, so also this issue uh, of correlation of cost and effectiveness and talent pool. And um, yes, um, so if you would estimate 
if you could compare uh, your city to Bitkost, is it? Of course, it's it's hard to compare. Uh, but uh, w would you say that? Uh, and and what are the um, uh, so to say your best selling points in? In comparison, for example, to uh, to, to Bitcoin, because you are having a similar um, market niches, IT, and yes, thank you. Bitcoin is much smaller than Wrocław, uh, but of course, it's quite well developed city. But it's like Bitcoin is around one hundred thousand people. Wrocław is six hundred thousand people. Uh, Right now in Bydgoszcz, we've got 10,000 people working in IT and modern business service sector. We've got 40, uh, almost 50,000 people. And I would say that there are several differences. First of all, is scale and uh, the, the population. So availability of people. So, yes. This is quite strange because the Poznan and Wrocław are similar in terms of size of the city, uh, but Poznan is more about Polish medium-sized companies, uh, and we are more about big international companies. The, the, the structure of businesses in Poznan is, uh, is more about Polish ones. But what is important, talking, coming back to Bydgoszcz, Bydgoszcz is smaller academia central. So if you would like, to, if big company would like to expand in Bydgoszcz, it, it'd be quite difficult because they've got around 20,000 students and in IT, maybe 3,000 students yearly. So it's much smaller than Wrocław, but still it's a very beautiful city. <laughs> Okay. Of course, the most important is to have the idea. And uh, some people are extremely creative and innovative, and they've got uh, ideas that would change the world. But it's quite unique. And I would say that the most important uh, is to find out what are the needs of the companies. Because some big companies they've got problems which are not their core businesses and they don't know how to solve them and they are looking for the solutions outside the organization. So all big brands, Microsoft, Google, HP, IBM, they are looking for solutions that are provided by startups. And I would say that the most important, each of these big companies, they've got their own acceleration program. They are looking for the startups around the world. They've got acceleration programs in Europe, United States, Asia, everywhere. And I would say that depends on the profile of startup is to, to think that if the solution that I would like to, the product, the service that I would like to implement is really required by the market. And Finding the links between big companies and startups uh, is crucial for the growth of startup ecosystem. And for example, Israel, which is the biggest startup ecosystem globally, they've got why, why the ecosystem has developed there because of the needs of state, Israel state, because of the army. So first, uh, the Startups provided services for the army, for example, but also right now they've got all international brands who are looking for the solutions among young people. So from my perspective, the most important is to search for the needs of big companies that would like, that could implement our solution. Could you say specifically about the also, if you are thinking about establishing your own business startup, I would recommend to visit some international events that are in Europe. For example, Slash in Helsinki or Web Summit in Lisbon. I attended Web Summit last year, November last year, and it was the biggest conference I've ever seen. It, there were 16,000 people on the conference. There were like 
thousands of startups presented, but also thousands of big corporations. And uh, it was like four days, really intense work. And the, the idea of the conference is to link big corporations with startups. So also, if you consider your own business activity, I would recommend to, to, to participate in Mobile Congress Barcelona, Slash, Web Summit, and several other events that are in Europe. This is maybe the, one of the most important points, what has changed in the economy. In the 20th century, the economy was about exchanging goods, and nowadays it's about exchanging ideas. <coughs> And to exchange ideas, you need networking, you need conferences, you need to, to, to meet people, and you need an international meeting. And academics is important. So, um, but also, what we do in Rotterdam, for example, we frequently organize meetups, hackathons, <coughs> where young people could present their ideas uh, among mentors. Very 
first hub. Mm -hmm. well, in Warsaw, there are several um, startup hubs like WeWork and other big international uh, networks. Okay, so first of all, we provide them with office space on really attractive condition. This is co working space. But also, we provide startups with mentoring programs. Uh, so we've got mentors in different fields how to build the business model, how to go to on American market, and how to recruit people, etc. So we've got mentoring program. We do have acceleration program. So we are raising startups with big companies that are in the city. So we are investigating investigating the needs of Nokia, IBM, and then we are trying to find startups that could cooperate with them. And additionally, we organize a lot of events dedicated to startup community like hack-up nights and hackathons and uh, meetups together with big big partners. Also, we've got the, for example, the list of all venture capitals and funds that are in the city to provide startups with information about the potential foundings. No, this is not a private initiative, but of course local government in Wrocław has also its own initiative. For example, uh, we do have Wrocław Technological Park, which is one of the biggest technological park in uh, in Poland, and we do provide startups also with office space, but also with laboratories, uh, with all the equipment that would be required to start business activities. It does work. It, it does work. You have you have two models because taking into consideration two spaces, they are really strong in terms of uh, startups. The first one is Berlin, which is definitely number one in Europe, Europe wide, and the second one is which is Israel. In Israel, there is a strong, there has been a really strong public support for startups, and in Berlin, just at the beginning, nothing. I mean, the the, the city wasn't interested to, to, to support startups, but the issue was to get a certain <clears throat> many creative people getting, getting, getting together. The density. The density is, 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 the, is, the, is the crucial issue. And in Israel, it was organized by public institutions. And in Berlin, it happened just by accident. I mean, the city was extremely cheap and very nice. And therefore, <coughs> The International Creative Society wanted to to live in Berlin, and they, they discovered in a few years the city is extremely nice, but they need to earn money, and therefore they started they started to to organize their own companies. Nowadays, it's, it is already a little bit supported by by by, by, by the by the state. Yeah, yeah. The density the density of creative people is uh, is, is is crucial. It is because um, I have read a lot of books about startups and creation of startups communities. So you, you need to have academia for sure. So uh, universities you've got. You, you have to have young people who would like to 
uh, start up uh, their own businesses. Uh, that's very important to be the cultural center so that you've got some designers, artists to, to mix the ideas and would be great if you have uh, founding partners. So you've got VCs, uh, et cetera. And you've got, if you have this all factors, it's the, uh, the question and it's the most difficult, how to match them, how to make them cooperate together. And in Wrocław still it's very difficult to collaborate with universities. It's not, not only difficult for startups, it's on, also difficult for big companies because it's like, um, the, the universities are quite conservative organization in Poland and professors and professors they are professors they, they don't want to cooperate with businesses and we are looking for the way how to um, facilitate the cooperation with universities knowledge and professors who do not want to go for it. It's like kind of funny, I would say. <laughs> no, it's not the main uh, part because the, 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 the most important is to have the idea and, and to be able to implement the idea. And then founding is available all over the world. So if the idea is correct and the implementation is correct, it's quite easy to find money. Business is about product. I mean, even services. And university is about research. It's a, it's a different activity. But still, no. But research cannot consider the product? Sorry. Research is want to continue research. Research. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Two years ago, we convinced Coventry University, this is UK University, to open its first international br uh, branch in Europe, in Wrocław, in our city. They are starting Jan um, June this year. And Coventry University is not about the academia, it's about cooperating, co cooperation with business partners that are locally. And after the decision that Coventry will open its branch in Wrocław, local universities were terrified. Oh my goodness, that will kill us. They will stall our students. It's not academia. It's like technical school. They shouldn't call, uh, should be called university. So still we have to, a lot of to do to, to change the perception of researcher and traditional big Polish universities. Uh, view science is important as well. Mm -hmm. You understand, I mean, it's, it's a different, it's a different mental activity, but you need to have pure science to make an after applied science. My question, uh, oh, very long. <laughs> My question is a little bit different. Uh, what you said about unemployment rate and uh, that how the employment increased in the past several years. Let's imagine the person is coming to Rostov and the person would like to find a job in the sector. Uh, what kind of Depends on country of origin, because if it's member of European Union, it's quite easy because you don't have to register yourself. If you are outside European Union, you have to register, and unfortunately, the procedure in Wrocław is quite long. So I would say that the, the one of the challenge is the registration process. But the finding also depends on profile. If we are talking about IT, it's like one day to find a job. I would say that if suddenly 50,000 IT specialists appear in Wrocław, we will need around two weeks to, to find jobs for them because it's really a uh, required job profile. If you are, I don't know what could be your specialization, for example, graphic designer, also there is great requirement for, for that profile. So it depends on, on the, the skills, experience, but in all technological profiles, um, it's quite easy to find 
job in Wrocław. We've got several platforms dedicated to job offers where companies present their profiles. And the city do not provide any specific support for foreigners that are decided to move to Wrocław. About, I'm interested about uh, in uh, the policy. Which, what, uh, what was changed from like 2005 uh, till uh, 2018? I mean, what made um, Wroclaw uh, attractive for investors? If uh, anything was changed in policy, I mean, on the uh, local level, on national level, uh, if you did any changes in like in your country. Okay, so. I'm not sure if you know what the political situation in Poland is right now. And we've got quite conservative party, mm, peace it's called, and the perception of that party among investors is not really great. Um, but still, local authorities and cities are quite independent and still Poland is growing and a lot of investors decided to invest in Poland, but they are more related with the cities than with the central government. But I've heard and Wrocław lost some projects because of the question about our central government and the perception of foreign investors and these companies decided to invest in Czech and Slovakia because they consider political situation in Czech and Slovakia more stable than in Poland. I'm not very great fan of our current government, um, but still it, the, the government is supported by 40% of Polish population, so it's quite high. And we had election last year, so we've got additional uh, almost four years of current government. The change in law I can see was about spending on this, uh, this, this subject because at the beginning, after we joined the European Union, the, the issue was about uh, helping, supporting companies and helping them to, to understand the, the, the situation in Poland. And nowadays, the, the, the best indicator is to, to, to present the city is growing in terms of population. And this is the urbanistically, and from the civilizational point of view, and this is anyway the, the, one of the, of the differences, because really smaller cities in Poland, like, like Bydgoszcz, for example, they, they suffer because of being smaller and smaller. <clears throat> Fortu fortunately, the tendency in, 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 in Wrocław is a, is a different one. We're, we're really growing as an agglomeration, as a city as, a city as well. And to attract, to, 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 to be appealing for, for people, this is the subject. And also, if I may add, because if you compare statistical data about Poznań, Wrocław, Kraków, it's more or less the same. The same number of people, the same number of students, the same number of the companies. So the question is, how open for the business is the city? And we were quite lucky because Mayor Dudkiewicz really understands business needs. And every time when we've got new company that consider Wrocław, and we were shortlisted Barcelona, Wrocław, Plus Napoca, and Bratislava, for example, and the company um, has to decide where to invest. So when the management boards were coming to Wrocław, mayor always met them. Uh, they were invited uh, for land and did this openness, I would say, make the difference that we were really business open for the needs of the companies. My question is about money. Yeah, actually you said that uh, if you have an idea, if you have a startup and you have an idea, then you can find an investor. If you have a good idea. If, yeah, actually, yes. So, uh, how do you think the, the, to fight the corruption in the field of higher education, is it a good idea? Uh, what? <laughs> uh, I'm joking. Uh, so, we are working now on the project uh, on uh, fighting the corruption in the field of higher education. Uh, and uh, personally, me, I think that 
we won't find any investors. Because who is uh, interested in investing? I mean, it's just if you want to like make a gift for someone, yes. Yeah, who will benefit apart from the state and society and so on? I would say that this is crucial. And this is the crucial at the stage of idea. So who would benefit from my solution? And you have already answered, who would benefit from your solution? So your partner should be state. And it's extremely difficult. I would choose not public organization as a partner. I would choose business partner. So thinking about ideas, you have to think who would need my idea. And I would focus on for sure business partners because cooperation with state, even local government, is extremely difficult because of the procedures, public tender, tenders that you have to, that public institution has to do to, 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 to buy the solution. So much easier is to looking for commercial partner. And I, I don't know the answer for your question because I would say that this is quite niche idea um, and also it's not so common the, uh, uh, the, the, the you, you mentioned that it could be the state who, who else who do you consider as your potential partner The question is if universities will find beneficial for themselves to participate in the project. Because it's difficult because it needs the change of the mentality and perception of themselves. And because you need to cooperate with administration of universities and um, not but most how I would say that in Poland it would be as difficult as is here. <laughs> uh, if I understand it right, so like the key to your success is that you created like ecosystem for government and universities and this ecosystem is like closed, like poor science, poor knowledge and on the other hand you have business and ideas and and this is like engine for this like progress and uh, could you like say something to to i want to understand it deeper to go deeper no it isn't it isn't closed yeah. what i what i said what i said you need pure science is a it's a part of human development generally but firstly wherever you have to uh, to create innovations or to create starts up you don't use directly universities you need creative people from the universities but they are mainly organized wherever you, you go to Oxford to the United S States <clears throat> the university they, they have technology technological parts they, they, they have special I would say is somehow outside organized institution that they are the, the, the responsible for for those subjects. You, you, universities are mainly used to educate people and to create research, but it's a it's a it's a pool of of people you can you can put in a different activity as as well, but the the role of the university isn't to deal with uh, with innovation. The role is to educate people and to to deal with research, research science. Universities they, they, they have been created not for creating jobs, companies, and and so on. It's a it's a different social role. You got it, yeah? Or, uh, 
but you have to, but you have you, you have to because it's a, this is the... Like knowledge that works, really works, and it's like progressive, and here we just have like situation like you need to be, like, like young people okay, need to be but educated, but yeah. what is the goal yeah. like for this okay, education? Okay. Like are you interested just in science yeah. or science, or are you interested in progress and startups and in a German system, for example, you, you, you can distinguish because between high schools, they educate people for companies, and between universities, they, they just deal with general education and with research. And research isn't, I mean, the focus of research isn't the innovation. The focus of research is to better understand the reality. This is the focus of research. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a different intellectual activity. But as I said, having a university, you have a really rich pool of talents. And you can use this pool to, making, to creating the cooperation with businesses. But it, it isn't the, the main goal of the, of the university. In Ukraine, we have such a situation that, like, mm, the idea is that everybody needs this high education and university and needs to go to university, and it's like it's conservative and it's like it's. No, it isn't because. Like, you know, like, it's like to be. Uh, like that end, I don't know. Like if you are not interested in research, really, like university and research and science, and you see, like, just oh, I will be educated, but I'm not interested in. But have a have a look, have a look. And it's like that end is the university. But take, and education. Take a different perspective. Whatever you want to achieve, and this will be one of the subjects in the in the future, you need several levels of capital. You need, you need money, whatever you do. You need money because you have to pay for something. You, <clears throat> you need people, I mean human resources. You need intellectual capital. I mean the, the, the people you, you, you're using, they need to be better educated, wiser. Yeah? The better educated, the, 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 the better. And finally, you need making people cooperating. You need, you need social, social capital. Yeah? You need money, you need human resources, you, you need intellectual capital, and then you need, you need social, social, social capital. And observing, I mean, the, the, the society from this perspective, the better the people are educated, the better for the, for the society, because intellectual capital is, 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 is growing, and you can even educate people in, in, in social, capital, social capital as well. Therefore, I would say the, highest, the, the, the high education needs to cooperate somehow with, <coughs> with business milieu, but <coughs> for businesses, the issue is simple. They want to, the universities to, 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 to create curricula, curricula directly dedicated to Siemens, IBM, Google. And it isn't so simple. This is what I wanted, what I wanted to stress. The, the, the companies, they are not interested in pure science because they, 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 they don't need it. They need something what is, what is created by applying sci sciences. But applying sciences, they need pure science at the, at the beginning. Therefore, research is, is important, but it wasn't the issue of, of our of our of the lecture of, of Eva, and you you have to tell why do you don't agree. <laughs> because apart from the pure science, I do believe that universities should also have applied science departments and be open for to to be able to teach people according to the needs of businesses, because then people could find good jobs. Uh, because not everyone from the university would be researcher or scientist. So my ideal world would be to have university with pure science on the extra high level and applied science. Yeah, okay. you, 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 can, you can distinguish, but have a... 
Many, many years ago, because in my previous job, I used to be, I used to be headhunter, and I was presenting a guy for IBM. He was a mathematician, and he got the job in, in London, finally, because of his proper answer. Because he got, he got a question, <clears throat> could you tell something about you? And his answer was pretty short. He just said, I am pretty smart. And you know, this, I mean, to, to make people smarter, smarter, smarter and smarter, it's, it's finally something what, what, what is helping the civilization to, 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 to grow. And one more, one more time, one more time, that there are schools, there are high schools that are dedicated to, to, I mean, just to deliver certain competencies. But for universities, universities, the, 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 the issue of research and pure science is crucial as well. You, you shouldn't make the university just, just, just dealing with delivering people for, 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 for companies. They're not for... The university is an institution which, is, which was created not only because of delivering people for jobs. You know, I, I just got to this like young people. The cross, the cross. Who, like, mi mis uh, misunderstand things like what do they go to the university for? Mm -hmm. Like this is like wrong way. <laughs> they are like not interested in research. They go to the university to be educated and to get a new, good job, yeah. the right quality of life and yeah. everything. But university doesn't like isn't the way to the quality of life. But it's just to research. No, no, no just. Uh, but it's like like real life in Ukraine. Now, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm trying to tell and what I'm really trying to st stress: when you measure the quality of the university. You shouldn't deal with the number of students. You should deal with the numbers of doctors. Doctors, PhDs. When, when you measure the quality of the university, then not the number of students, the number of, of PhDs. This is, then you, then, you, then you understand the quality of the university. It's, it's not a high school to, one more time to create jobs, but, but we are talking now about universities and we wanted to talk about, about business. But it's connected from my perspective. Yes, it is. But... But, but, and I would say, uh, I'd like to say about the best sorts of startups. They are from technical university. They are, the business is conducted by PhDs from, from Wrocław University of Technology. And these people, after career as a researcher, they decided to start their own activity. They, their knowledge about pure science was quite deep. Uh, and, but, and they decided to, to, to this deep knowledge applied to the life and they achieved success. The higher, the higher is the quality, the higher is the quality, then the better the more smarter are the people, the, the, the people from the university. This is the connection I wanted to, 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 to share, to share with you. Not, 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 every, not every student from the university is going to be scientists. This is, uh, this is clear. I would say 5%. I don't know. Like one more ten. So, and we are like, it's me to young people, you know? Like, they do not. But understand you want to talk about business or about universities? Young people and future. <laughs> and but, like the, the I, roots of the problem. Like, uh, in, like no progress in this area, you know? Like every year we, like, we are mean to next generations. Like they do not get this right understanding of this situation. And they go five years to go wrong way. It's like, Wow. But, but like research, university is really for researching. And one of the person no. like interested in research. No. And smart and knowledge. No.
No, it isn't a problem. It's it's not only it's not only in the in the, in the Ukraine. It's, it's 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 a general it's a general problem. But but one more time, as I told you, wherever you have a look, Europe wide, and in the United States is is the, is the same. <clears throat> Innovation and startups, they are, they are not created at the universities, but in a special places, they are connected with the universities. Connected, not at the universities. The, the University of Oxford, one of the best worldwide, they have maybe 10 technological parks. They are connected with, with them. They do cooperate, but that, it's a different institution. It, yeah, it's connected with the University of Oxford, but it, is, it isn't the University of Oxford. This is the first point. And the second one, I, I just wanted to stress, when you, when you stop to deal with pure science and research, then you will kill the, the, the academic milieu. It, it doesn't mean everybody, everybody needs to be a scientist, but to make them growing, make them developing, I mean, I'm talking now about universities, you have to produce scientists as well. And when you try to measure the quality of the, the quality of the university, then the science is more, impor more important than the curricula. This, but but this, is, this is the discussion about what is the university itself. Now, where, what, what are the points where science and business could be connected? No, science shouldn't be. For, uh, for like Pure science is not for business. Uh, 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 but it's like it shows that it's innova like innovation and, and. But innovations that are created not at the universities, you, you don't understand what I'm trying to, to, to express. In two months, the, 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 one of the best specialists for innovation will be here and, and he will expla explain how to. Innovation is extremely important. But innovation, is it an issue for the, for the university? But there should be platforms, separate platforms, that are dedicated to cooperate. People from yes. university but, but, businesses. But, 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 but I was repeating this three times. <laughs> wherever, wherever you look, you have such platforms, but they are not directly a part of the university. We do have one technological, just one big enough, I would say, but also we've got other organization which right now is owned by the central government, which is also about laboratories, uh, equipment, technological space for companies to, to start their own activity. You were first. <laughs> My question is in our field. Uh, can you tell a little bit about uh, uh, developing programs uh, um, in culture sphere in Wroclaw? Okay, we were European Capital of Culture 2016. And because of that fact, we've got, I don't know how many events during 2016, cultural, 4,000 cultural events. And right now there is a lot of programs dedicated to citizens to participate in cultural life. And we've got initiatives dedicated to non-governmental organization and other institution to create cultural life in Wrocław. So we've got grants for them, uh, small and medium sized, uh, local government. Uh, of course, we've got some central money for the theaters, museums, but also a lot of money from local budget is dedicated for cultural events. Okay, so probably. Do you know how much uh, people working in health of certain workers? Okay. 
One, Brotsworth is not, it's not so big. Uh, uh, it's quite compact city. The cultural environment cooperate together. We've got municipal institution, institutions, state institutions, and non-governmental organizations. But for example, right now they are working in March in Wrocław, there is cultural congress of all institutions that are in cultural field in Wrocław. So they know each other and we could estimate how many, how many people are involved in cultural activities. And also we've got information how many people participate in cultural life because we've got statistics from the theaters, uh, visitor, how many visitors is in each museum per year. So we, we know that data. I don't remember what is the percentage of budget dedicated to the cultural culture aspect. 5%. 5%, so it's quite high because we've got 1 billion euro budget. So 5% is quite big. But this is the, the, this is an important question because, as I as I told you once once before, there is a strong correlation between investing into culture and innovation. I mean, the more you invest into culture, and have a look, it isn't a direct investment into innovation because you you produce theaters, concerts, you support NGOs is dealing with with culture itself, but then the the society is more creative and is able to produce, produce innovation. And <clears throat> to be innovative, to create an innovative society, you need academia to make people smarter and wiser, better educated. You need culture to make people more creative. And you need an international society to to, to, to making people able to get fresh fresh ideas, not to stay only in a new way of, of, of think, thinking. And finally, you need lazy people that are smart. Yeah? Because then... Because, but... but this, is the, this is the mixture which makes the society growing in terms of uh, in, 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 in innovation. Thank you very much. It was really great meeting you. Thank you.